regular meeting of the Common Council to order. That's not sure yet. Would you call the roll, please? Bauman? Here. Berg? Here. Eberg? Here. Doyle? Here. Manny? Here. Moody? Here. Perez? Here. Ports? Here. Schultz? Here. Stephan? Here. Devin Akron? Here. Tevin Akron? Excused. Vanderweel? Here. Wangeman? Here. Warner? Here. Wenninger? Here. Fifteen present. Corms present. Alderman Ports. Oh, excuse me, Alderman Perez. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, I would move approval of the regular, uh, the minutes of the regular meeting on November 18th and the minutes of the two special uh, meetings of November 25th. I would move that they be approved and entered on the record. Second. Moved and second that the uh, minutes of the regular meeting and its two special meetings be approved <coughs> under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Pledge of Allegiance, Alderman Berg. Correct. Doyle. Doyle? Okay, Alderman Doyle. We have one hearing this evening, and that's rezoning the property located at 604 Erie Avenue. Is there any interested parties wishing to be heard on the hearing? Any interested parties wishing to be heard? Alderman Warner. Thank you, Your Honor. I move the hearings be closed. Moved and seconded that the hearings be closed. Under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Steve, appointments? Now, this is dated uh, today's date to the honorable members of the council. Pursuant to the requirements of section 7.30 of the Wisconsin statutes, I herewith submit for your approval the list of nominations for election inspectors. The aforementioned section of the law stipulates the manner in which election officials shall be chosen, and I tender my appointments as follows to retain as much seniority and experience as possible while complying with the state law. Respectfully submitted, James R. Schramm, Mayor, and I believe each of you has... No, I didn't give him copies. Oh. Uh, there's a list of five pages worth of nominees for election inspectors. And I, I don't know if the council wishes me to read them all. I'd be happy to do that. But, uh, I'll send a copy along for the confirmation with your agenda next time. Okay, that line's over. Thank you. Is that it? That's it, I think. Are we for him? No one. All of Schultz. Thank you, Your Honor. Before we get into the agenda, I've got two things. Uh, one, in this evening's Sheboygan Press, there was an article, I understand the Journal Sentinel had an article too that possibly had a little more information in it, uh, so I may not have everything quite straight. But anyway, the, the article had to do with uh, local government applying uh, for to the state for waivers from state mandates. Uh, only six applications have been re received. And I was just curious uh, if that was something that uh, Sheboygan should possibly be considering uh, and if that sh should be referred to the strategic fiscal plan. If you wanted to submit something or, or should I have a document uh, put together and and have uh, strategic strategic fiscal plan committee address the issue and uh, if okay. it's something that we want. Hang to on a minute, okay. Mike. I can respond to that, uh, Alderman Schultz. Uh, we discussed it at uh, department head meeting, I believe, two weeks ago. If I'm not mistaken, uh, fire and police protective services are excluded from that from that waiver list. Uh, copies of the waiver application were given to all the department heads and we asked them to take a look at their departments for that for that purpose. Okay, so Sheboygan is pursuing it. Okay, thank you. The other one is, uh, also I checked my email this evening before I came up here and found the agenda for the strategic fiscal plan meeting for Wednesday of this week and uh, it's listed as being a closed session. I guess I would like to go on record as objecting to it being a closed session meeting. The agenda, it says joint discussion. 
Uh, I think we've had way too many closed session meetings on this issue, issue the way it is. Uh, I think it's just responding to uh, Orange Cross's uh, letter to the city and the county. Uh, and I think those discussions should be an open session uh, for the benefit of the public and everybody concerned. So I would just like to, uh, for myself, go on record as objecting to the closed session. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? If not, Alderman Perez. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. On the consent agenda, I would move to accept and file all ROs, accept and adopt all RCs, pass all resolutions and substitute resolutions. Second. Moved and second to accept and file all ROs, accept and adopt all RCs, pass to resolutions and substitute resolutions, and that's 17-1 through 17-14. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Dberg. Aye. Eberg. Aye. <coughs> Doyle. Aye. Moody. Aye. Excuse me, Manny. Aye. Okay, I got Moody. Perez. Aye. Ports. Aye. Schultz. Aye. Stephan. Aye. Dee Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Warner. Aye. Wenninger. Aye. Bauman. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. <coughs> 17, 15, and 16 to be referred. 17, 17 will lie over. Uh, yeah. no, <laughs> 17, 18 through 23 to be referred. 17, 24 through 26 will lie over. 17, 27 through 35 to be referred. 1736 lies over. 1737, by Public Works, recommending not endorsing the county's use of the Armory Park lot. Alderman Berg. Uh, thank you, and I'd like to uh, refer that back to uh, committee for further reconsideration. Second. Moved and second to refer this back to Public Works Committee under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. 1738 to be referred. 1739 to be referred. 1623, <coughs> RO by City Plan Commission recommending rezoning property at 604 Erie Avenue. Alderman Warner. Thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion to accept and file the report of officer and pass the attached ordinance. Mm -hmm. Moved and second to accept and file the RO and pass the attached ordinance under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, the property in question, in question was at one time a church <coughs> located on the northwest corner of Erie Avenue and North 6th Street. Prior to 1996, it was zoned in such a manner that permitted business operation in, in the building. In 1996, the council approved the present zoning ordinance and zoning map in this property was changed to neighborhood residential, an error that was not caught at the time. There are a number of businesses operating in the building, none of which knew that they were operating improperly. And because the property was previously zoned with a commercial designation and used commercially for a number of years, the commission, commission recommends a change. <coughs> okay, if there's no other discussion, Pat, would you call the roll, please? Eberg. Aye. Doyle. Manny, Aye. Moody, Aye. Perez, Aye. Ports, Aye. Schultz, Aye. Stephan, Dee Akron, Vanderweel, Wangaman, Warner, Wenninger, Bauman, Deberg. 15 ayes. Motion carried. 1628, resolution by Alderman T. Van Akron, Perez, Schultz, Doyle, and Stephan transferring funds to establish advance to TIF 11 debt service. Alderman Perez. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that uh, that we uh, that resolution number 193-0203 be put upon its uh, passage. Moved and second that the resolution be put upon its passage. Under discussion. <coughs> Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Doyle, Aye. Manny, Aye. Moody, Aye. Perez, Aye. Ports, Aye. Schultz, Aye. Stephan, Devin Akron, Vanderweel, Wangaman, Aye. Warner, Aye. Wenninger. Bauman, Deberg, Eberg. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. 
1638 RC by Public Protection and Safety, recommending filing documents submitting a communication from various residents of Fox Meadows sub Subdivision relative to their concerns for traffic safety in their neighborhood and passing the attached ordinance. Alderman Warner. Well, thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion to accept and file the report of committee and pass the attached ordinance. Second. Moved and second to accept and file the RC and, and excuse me, accept and adopt the RC and pass the ordinance under discussion. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. This neighborhood problem was brought before the Public Protection and Safety Committee meeting at our November 13th meeting. And as you may remember, this issue was also a news story in our local newspaper, the Sheboygan Press. The newer residential area on our city's south side is an attractive and very active area. There are many young families with children living there as, many, as well as many other city residents. Since the opening of Riverdale Avenue and County Highway OK intersection, Riverdale Avenue has become a cut through for people other than neighborhood residents and the neighborhood itself has uh, filled up with more homes being built there. The increase in traffic as well as the fact that there are no controlled intersections in the subdivision Merit action on the neighborhood request. Mrs. Colleen Hetzel and Mr. Adrian Martinez attended our meeting to express their concerns and those of their neighbors. The recommendation is to put stop signs on Gray Fox Drive and White Fox Court at their intersections with Riverdale Avenue. And this is a neighborhood issue. The homeowners and their families are the people that this will impact. They are the people that want these stop signs added in your Public Protection and Safety Committee recommends and ask for your support. <coughs> If there's no other discussion, Pat, would you call the roll, please? Manny? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Ports? Aye. Schultz? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Dee Van Akron? Aye. Vanderwill? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Wenninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. Doyle? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. <laughs> 1635 by Alderman Bauman, amending <coughs> municipal code exempting members of the Mayor's Special International Committee residing within the boundaries of the Sheboygan Area School District from the residency, residency requirement. Alderman Bauman. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd move that the general ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Moved and second ordinance be put upon its passage under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Ports? Aye. Schultz? Stephan, D. Van Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. <coughs> Wangaman, Aye. Warner, Aye. Wenniger, Aye. Bauman, Aye. D. Berg, Aye. E. Berg, Aye. Doyle, Aye. Manny, Aye. 15 eyes. Motion <coughs> carried. 1636, we would like that to lie over until our January meeting. Can we have a motion on that? Could I have a motion, Alderman Warner? Second. Moved and seconded to lie over until January 6th, is it? The first meeting in January? Um, yes. Okay. Under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. 1640, general ordinance by Alderman Warner, Doyle, Winninger, Vanderwilly, and Manny, adding add the west side of North 31st Street from the south curb line of Superior Avenue to a point 266 <coughs> feet south to the no standing, stopping, or party, parking area regulations. Alderman Warner. I thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion the general ordinance be put upon, oh, it's wrong one, I'm sorry. No, no, that is right, correct, correct myself there. Make a motion the general ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Moved in a second ordinance be put upon its passage, under discussion. Mm -hmm. Under discussion, Your Honor, this concerns the street adjacent to the office of Doctors Larson, Green and Entringer and Sheboygan Optical on North 31st Street. Most of this street is already in the no parking regulations from the corner of Superior Avenue to the first driveway. And this would add a small portion between the two driveways to the regulations. With no pun intended, there has been a vision problem for patients exiting the parking lots. The office provides more than ample parking lot space for, for its patients and, and for its employees. And there's parking across the street also, so, and this will not affect the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Warner. <coughs> if there's no other discussion, would you call the roll, please? Perez. Ports, Aye. Schultz, Aye. Stephan, D. Van Akron, Vanderwill, Wangaman, Aye. Warner, Aye. Wenninger, Aye. Bauman, Aye. D. Berg, Aye. E. Berg, Aye. Doyle, Aye. Moody. Aye. Keep on forgetting Manny. I'm sorry, <laughs> Manny. You're forgiven. <laughs>
<laughs> there you go. <laughs> Good person to do that. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> Absolutely. 15 eyes. <laughs> Motion carried. That one you have to mark. You're forgiven, Pat. <laughs> I'll mark on the calendar. <laughs> 1641, General Ordinance by Alderman Warner, Doyle, Winninger, Vander Willey, and Manny amending the municipal code relating to re revocation of re retail liquor license for the lack of business activity. Alderman Warner. Thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion the general ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Moved in second ordinance be put upon its passage under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor. Last June, a retail liquor license became available at renewal time. At the licensing function of public protection and safety, we had five applicants for one license. The committee interviewed them and they were all very qualified. They, they all were startup small businesses, one being the Hops Haven Brew House, a microbrewery, soon to open on North 14th Street. Another, the Biro at 817 New York Avenue, they're remodeling the old Gutsucker Real Estate Building, and Alpha's Family Restaurant on Center Avenue. Also, the Garden View Family Restaurant on Kohler Memorial Drive Frontage Road applied for, one of the, applied for that license, as well as one of my favorites, which is El Camino at 823 Michigan Avenue. The committee chose the Biro as a recipient, but we really felt sorry for the other four applicants. After that episode, we realized the importance of these licenses to small business ventures and the value that they bring to our community. We have four or five current licenses that are not being used. The committee felt it was important to come up with a way to address the non-use of a license, a way that would be fair and equitable to the licensee, and also a way to provide flexibility to the Common Council to help ensure the use and value of the license to the community. This ordinance does just that. It won't be a committee decision. It will be a council decision. That, I believe, provides for a very powerful check and balance to make sure there is equal and equitable treatment that serves the city's best interest. This was a unanimous committee decision, and I would ask for your support. Alderman Mooney. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Alderman Warner, is this something that other communities do, and how do we find out if a business is inactive or not? How do we keep track of this kind of thing? I could add to that, yes. Most communities have a much stricter ordinance in place. Okay. Uh, I actually do have, if you'd like to see them after the meeting, I've got a list of communities all over the state. If they have circumstances where they have to close, like something happens to the building, a fire, a flood, or whatever, we don't take that into consideration. That wouldn't be, but yes, we would take it just, into consideration. If, they just, uh, if they're just mm -hmm. inactive for a certain amount of time, then we're saying they're going to forfeit their license? It gives us... It gives us the ability to go to them and say, hey, are you using your license? Oh, okay. Do you need a six-month extension for non-use? And the council can decide that. And, and, okay. and the purpose is, is to have a, a mechanism to look at licenses that aren't being used and give this council as a whole the authority to say, hey, grant them a six-month extension because they've got a good reason. Okay. Thank so. you. <clears throat> go ahead. City Attorney. I, I would just add to that that... Uh, this wouldn't be automatic uh, after that six month period. It provides that the council, after a public hearing, would uh, terminate or revoke the license. And it also indicates that for good cause shown could extend that six month period. So in the event that there was a fire, say Betty and they were out of business for a while, but they were working on getting the place fixed up and intended to open up again, that's the sort of situation where you, know, you wouldn't want to take away their license. You'd have that flexibility. Okay. There's no other discussion. Pat, would you call the roll? Ports? Aye. Schultz? Aye. Stephan? Aye. D. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Winninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Manny? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. 1740 will go to Public Works. 1741 goes to Public Works. 1742 goes to public works. Steve? 1743 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication received by the mayor from Orange Cross Ambulance uh, Board of Directors notifying the city and county it does not believe a contract to provide ambulance services is necessary. That will go to strategic fiscal plan. 1744 is a resolution authorizing the establishment of a policy to review the hiring of city employees during 2003 and eliminating the creation of any new city positions during 2003. Salary and grievance. 
1745 is the committee report by Public Protection and Safety Committee uh, with respect to a communication from Mary Zarafanetis relative to another accident at North 10th Street and Wisconsin Avenue. And the committee recommends that the report of officer be accepted and placed on file and the attached ordinance be passed. That will lie over. 1746 is an ordinance relating to stop signs so as to add a stop sign on Alabama Avenue and Kentucky Avenue before entering South 15th Street and South 16th Street. That lies over. Moved and seconded adjourned under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed?